Hey guys, I'm Steven. I'm Giselle. And we're the Lover's Passport. And today we're going to take you with us on a glacier tour. So we were in just in Iceland a few weeks ago. We went on a tour with a company called Local Guide Iceland. They're a family-run business. They've been going ever since 1891. And we also met tons of people over in Iceland who had done tours with them, both in the summer and the winter, since there are different options and everybody raves about them. And once we got there, we could see why. So we immediately got there and there's a pickup point, which is kind of by the glacier where you can get fitted for everything you're gonna need for a glacier hike, like your shoes. There are shoe rentals. We had some ice axes that we got. We had harnesses and crampons. So that was really nice to have. Felt super safe the whole time in terms of equipment. And then we suited up and headed on out to the glacier. We're starting our glacier tour. At the glacier tour, there's two different options when you do it during the summer. We went to Vatnajökull Glacier. I probably totally butchered it, but that is the biggest glacier in Iceland. It is massive. It's its own national park, but you can do a little short walk up or you can do the half day tour, which is the one that we did. It takes you to the very top of the glacier, as close as you can get without going into the massive ridges. Doing the longer tour definitely gives you a more all-inclusive experience. Like the shorter tours, you don't really go up very close to like the very impressive features of the glacier when we got all the way up there it's definitely a hike because you're on ice and you're going uphill but up up at the top you start to see the like light blue ice and you get to see some of the streams coming down you can even get some actual glacier water for your water bottles all that kind of stuff so from where you first stop for the shorter tour versus where you you last stop for the longer tour, it's definitely a difference in the view level, the view's insane at the end, and would definitely recommend going the longer one if you have the chance. Yeah, so our experience, the first thing they do is they take you in this really awesome van. It's massive. This thing was like, what, what do you think? Like. 15, 20 feet high. I wouldn't say it was even a van. It's like an <laughs> army truck converted for a glacier. The tires were taller than me. So first off, that was a really cool experience being able to hop in that. And it made it so we did not have to walk as far when we got to the glacier. You can drive up to probably within like a mile of where you start hiking up the glacier. But there's an off-roading trail you can do to get a little bit closer. So while we saw a lot of other people that were just doing it by themselves, decided to hike up the glacier, when, since we had the tour, they drove us all the way and it saved us literally probably an hour or two of hiking just to get to the base of it. Also, we don't recommend doing this without a tour guide. Our guide told us that there's several different areas of the glacier that are pretty dangerous. So like you could be walking and suddenly step and there's a giant hole that, you know, goes into the glacier. So you're gonna wanna go with someone who actually knows where they're going, what they're doing, and the features of the glacier and is properly equipped. Going up there, you need to have the safety equipment that I previously mentioned because hiking on a glacier is no joke. So I would definitely recommend hiring a tour company or a tour guide that is familiar with the area. As soon as we got there, we started hiking up the glacier. In the beginning, it's kind of all just water because the glacier is actually melting at an incredible rate just because of everything going on in the world. But once we got there, we started going uphill. It wasn't very steep, but we were walking in basically water. We would recommend doing an early hike as early as possible when you book a tour through local guide just because later in the day the glacier can get a little littered with the amount of people i think we probably saw 20 or 30 other tours out there while we were hiking in up. total that was over the span of a couple hours but like if you want it more to yourself definitely they said like the 8 30 a.m 9 30 a.m there's there's a lot less people and then the glacier kind of goes in levels. So the first part is kind of washed out because that's where most of the day tours go, the shorter hikes that we talked about. The second part, you really start to hike up and you get into these massive ridges that have these huge drops of 10 to 15 feet. So you kind of walk around those, gets a little bit steeper. That's when you're gonna be super happy. Local guide provides you with some crampons like Giselle said, if you never use crampons, don't worry, they explain how to do it. They give you an ice axe too. 
that you can hike up with. We didn't have to use ours, but just in case that you need to use it when you're getting up there, as soon as you get to the top, you stop probably about an hour and a half or two hours into hiking because that's as far as you can go while being safe. So once you get to the top, it does overlook this gorgeous like green area where in the summertime you might get to see some lupins. So like I said, this is our summer tour. We did it as we were driving the ring road. So it doesn't take a full day. It only took us about a half day. We started the tour later in the day at about three o'clock and it went until right around seven o'clock. So it was a pretty long tour, but it was totally worth it in our opinion. The experience, the guide, the history that we learned about the glacier was really interesting hearing about the blue ice compared to the other ice learning how the glacier actually moves because both of us were like it's ice how, how is it actually how is it moving how is it moving and creating these insane places like yosemite and then and creating crazy stuff out in iceland as well like i said this is the biggest one there's also another glacier directly next to it called Skaftfell. And that one is a little bit different. We heard it is much longer. You can see a lot more of the glacier without having to do the tour is what we heard. You walk up and you can see it all because it's a very long glacier, but you can't necessarily go on a hike on it unless you have a tour guide. If you go during the winter, they also have ice cave tours, which is something we definitely have on our bucket list. So when we return to Iceland to see the Aurora, to check out the insane place, the insane experience that Iceland has to offer in the winter. Highly recommend checking out their cave tours. They have the same options where they have a half day tour and a full day tour for their ice cave tours. And what's nice about the ice cave tours is every time you do one, you're gonna have a different experience. Every year they go and find these new different ice caves because it's not guaranteed that they're gonna be around the same time, same year, you know? So since they're melting so rapidly, um, it's it's fun because you never know what you're gonna get. That's what the guide said at least. He he really enjoys being able to do different ice cave tours. It really switches it up. So um, if you're going in the winter, would definitely recommend doing an ice cave tour. There's some really cool ones that we've seen pictures of that are like totally like blue ice and yeah, it's definitely on our bucket list. Also, if you would like to take part in this kind of tour, we did get a coupon code for you guys. It is PASSPORT10, all caps, no spaces. And we'll also put it down in the description box below. But if you're going to Iceland, this is definitely a must do on your itinerary. Anyway, if you guys wanna see more Iceland content, we have so many videos coming up in the future. We just finished releasing our Blue Lagoon versus the Sky Lagoon. So you'll have to check out to see which one we think is better Better. and this was our glacier tour next up we have the whole ring road that we're going to be talking about so if you guys want to see more as the content don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe and that will see you on the next one How is it? <laughs> <laughs>